Well, cartooners, I'd like to welcome you into my real home. This is where I live, and we're all set up for Christmas. And I hope that you'll join me right now as I read you the most famous of all Christmas stories, The Night Before Christmas. And I hope you get as much out of it as I do. I love reading it each year. So here it is. We're going to talk about that jolly old guy one more time. Are you ready? Sit back. That's it. Relax. And listen to the story of one of the most beloved people in the world. T'was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring. Not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama, in her kerchief and I in my cap, had just settled down for a long winter nap when... Out on the lawn there arose such a clatter that I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. When what to my wandering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blixen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount up to the sky, so up to the housetop the courses they flew, with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came, with a bound, he was all dressed in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes, well, they were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, oh, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His draw little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke, it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face, a round little belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know.